welcome to my space and thoughts on all things travel fun and adventure as you can see today i'm ready to go hiking <laughs> welcome to my channel life with sunshine i am sunshine if you're new here we have a lot we discuss here but today specifically when you see the red background it means we're talking about adventure and fun <laughs> so today i want to tell you guys about the story of my hiking mount kilimanjaro it was a process to get there but i'll go straight to how the hike began this hike happened in 2018 20, 2018 yes 2018 with my friends i can't remember the month but it was 2018 and we were a group of guys we were about <clears throat> Wow, I think maybe 15 people, I can't remember the number, but we are a group of guys who are called mountain missionaries because what, what we do is when we go hiking, we go share the word of God with the people that we meet. So we make sure we have enough time to share to those who we meet or minister to those we meet with. So this story begins in Moshi. If you want to go hiking in Kili from Kenya, best way to go is go to Moshi, find a guest house there um, where you spend the night at least, acclimatize to the temperature there and then um, get your bus up to the first gate. So the route we used was called Marangu, Marangu or otherwise also known as Coca-Cola route or the more luxurious route. Luxurious <laughs> because there are huts, there are huts um, all the way to the top because it's just easier to not be in a tent on Mount Kilimanjaro. The other routes like Machame, people sleep in tents. How? I don't know. Not me. Never. Can never be. So we began at Kinapa Gate. That is where we began our journey at Kinapa Gate, all of us. That's where you sign in, um, pay what needs to be paid for the park fee because the place is a park. Kilimanjaro is protected space. Um, so we begin at Kinapa Gate and then began our walk all the way through to the first stop, um, which is Mandara Hut. Now, before we got to Mandara Hut, we had this really amazing walk um, through a rainforest. Wow, it was so beautiful. Green and tampered with some waterfalls, so serene and quiet. And uh, but those who hike know how it can just just seeing nature in itself um like live and that has not been you know damaged or done anything wrong by human beings is just the best thing so we go through this beautiful it's just a, a a gradual um walk all the way to mandara hut through this beautiful rainforest thank god it didn't rain um took us about was it three hours i don't know but it was a nice gradual walk all the way to the first stop which was the Mandara Hut. At Mandara Hut, we slept in cabins. No, in Mandara Hut, it was the hostel kind of share. It was a, a room on top of the dining where we all slept, like men and women all slept in the same, the same space, but it was like the bunk bed situation. So there was, we just divided one side for girls, one side for guys but there was no curtain we were all just sleeping so we had our dinner there we had our porters when you go hiking you really need your porters and and your guides so our pot, your porters carry your bigger bags you just have your day bags in fact i need to i don't have my day bag i want to show you guys a day bag because we will need it just hold on so this is what you usually need this is your day pack which usually has with you your 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 water your water source is usually in there this will come <laughs> handy later in the story um, let me just put it on over here so yeah this this sits over here so when you're hiking you just pop it open pull that up and then take a sip of your water so when uh, um, we finished that place was cold not too chilly but when you come in the morning the water was frozen in the tub, like like either frozen cold, like you've just removed from the freezer. And so we just had to ask them to boil some water, do a quick, we call it a passport shower. You wash, you wash the areas that need to be cleaned. The rest, you'll know ahead of time. <laughs> Those who go hiking, you know. 
full showers no never impossible so from wandara had to we moved to horombo horombo i don't remember how many meters it is above sea level um, i'll check that out but it is beautiful now the walk to horombo was just um through the the name of the area for it the terrain of the area forgotten but it was not as breathtaking but when you get to horombo you're now at a place where you're above the clouds so if this is where the clouds are over here when you hike up you get to a point here where when you look you're above the clouds like literally above the clouds it looks like cotton candy or cotton wool just laid out spread out the most beautiful thing ever it's amazing also as well again mandara to horombo is just another uh, gradual climb the whole hike of kili is just a gradual walk until now the last day so we got to horombo we were assigned our different cabins now here there were different cabins where we were sharing two uh, it slips to two per cabin it's just some it's just honestly like a triangle it's a small triangle where there are two beds um, ours only had space for two the others that have four we assigned our different uh, cabins and at night when we were going out to have dinner when you look up i don't know if you guys have ever gone out and seen the stars like you can touch them like you can literally touch the stars it was so beautiful i had seen colors of stars i never knew were there do you know that they are red stars i saw red orange of course the regular as we would say white stars we saw a lot of shooting stars and it just felt so surreal just being there it's like you're like what this is something you have never seen before i think also because the reason we don't see the stars as much is because of all the lights i hear like places like new york city seeing stars is very hard because there's so many lights from the buildings and billboards everywhere when you look up you can't see nothing but from there it's just pitch dark all you have is your headlamp and that's it but when you look up it's so amazing so that was at horombo horombo they also have bathrooms there where you can go shower clean yourselves up very nice and pristine place i really liked it now from horombo we get to the next stop which is at kibo now kibo is this is the stop just before you summit now on our way to kibo we got to a place where um, where we took our break where there's a sign written last water point like there's no there's no water after that there's no there's no taps <laughs> there's no taps it's, it's the water either from the mountain or the water you've carried so you'll see a sign there saying the last water point and it gets it gets colder the higher you go so you have to actually dress really 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 warm so when we get to kibo i start feeling like of course and also usually when i hike sorry i'm usually one of the last guys so i'm getting there um last ish and i'm feeling like oh, i feel like i'm getting a cold or something so i remember um if you want to deal with a cold without taking medicine we put an have an onion onion poultice put chop up onions put them at the bottom of your foot and then just wrap your foot either with a cling film or a hanky or something to just have it sit there so i decided to do that at night mind you we had been hiking from from Horob from Horombo to kibo took us took us six hours it could have, yeah it was a six hour hike and so i put my poultice but that place was cold so cold i could not sleep because the cold is hitting i'm wearing two pairs of two pairs of socks the cold is just coming through the onion and then going to my foot so my feet are numb i'm not sleeping i'm so tired so i decided let me go sleep with um, go sit in the kitchen and try and stay warm so i took off that poultice so fast went to the kitchen and just sat there with the potters as they were chopping stories i'm trying to keep warm there and you know cuddle up this is remember i've hiked for six hours usually us slow people are given a two hour head start before everybody else so at, this is at around 10 we went to sleep at 7 i've not slept up to 10 because i'm just tossing and turning because of the cold that's in my feet so when i go to the kitchen i try and sleep there it's impossible because i'm still cold 
my feet have not yet completely warmed up. I mean, my hiking boots. <sighs> so this is 10 p.m. So I sit there until around 11.30 and then I'm being told by Macho, the guide who used to work with us slow guys, it's time for us to leave. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, it's time to go. It's midnight. We have to leave if you want to catch the sunrise. And I'm like, I've not slept. I was not feeling okay. He said, do, then do you want to stay? Stay where? Who? <laughs> not me. I came to summit and summit we must. So I went, packed up my bag, my day pack, packed it up, filled it with my water uh, and then left. And let me tell you guys, I've been working for six hours straight. Only took a break for like 30 minutes and then you keep walking. You have not, you, you had, I had, I think two hours of sleep that night. I'm feeling like a homer is coming. We begin our walk, headlights on, we start walking all the way to Indian's cave. And I think that's where, was it Jamaican's cave? I forgot whether it's, I think it's Indian's cave. That's where I almost gave up. I was literally, guys, I was walking like, are you see, this is how I was walking. That's literally how I was walking so slow. I couldn't, I couldn't think properly. I was so tired. So I had formed a sign language with my guide, Macho. When I would need water, I would just tap. I'd tap here. So he would pull this out, take it out. And then I just um, get drink, suck on the water for myself. Get, get some water. He'd put it back down. And then... I had earphones because I needed, I, at that point I needed music to keep me going. So I had my worship music that I was listening to, I had saved. I had saved because there's no Wi-Fi up there. <laughs> you can't say you're opening iTunes to get music. So I had my music I was listening to, walking at such a slow pace. I was, I felt like I was drunk in sleep. I honestly don't remember from that place, the, from Indians cave, was it Jamaicans cave, from there to to Gilman's. That Gilman's is the first peak. I don't remember how I got there. I just remember that the rest of my team came and passed me as I was walking at this pace, you know, and they always encourage you, pole, 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 no hurry. They came and passed me and then it got to around 5.30 a.m. and the guy is like, yo, the sun is going to rise and you might not catch it by the time you get to the peak. At that point, I was just like, I don't care. I don't really, I just want to get to the top. So I'm just, this is walking, sluggishly walking. And thank God for my younger brother, Moses, who was there with us. He, he runs up mountains, as in, he runs up mountains. I guess his youth helps him. He, he had, from the top, I think he saw me and decided to come back and help because they were watching the sunrise. So this, what happened was he would, pull me from the front while the guide would push me. It was that bad, it reached a point I could not walk. So he would pull me up and the guide would push me for every step, because it reached a point you had to like, um, like um, take big steps. I had no energy, I was done and I was finished. The, I had no energy drink with me at that point. He told me you should take it once you get to the first point, to Gilman's Peak. So. When we got to Gilman's, by God's grace and by the help of my brother Moses and um, the guide Macho, somehow I just sat down, um, took out my GoPro. As I tell you guys, I always hike with, there has to be a camera next to me. Took out my GoPro, sat by the edge of a stone and just, now overlooking the horizon is Mawenzi. Still have to go hike that mountain. Mawenzi and then you just see the sun peaking see the sun peaking and it's the most beautiful thing ever guys and the sun looks different there are many colors there that we don't see when we're now on the here on sea level it is so different it was so breathtaking let me show i was so sleepy i was holding my gopro and there's a point where i just and my gopro <laughs> my gopro fell down and i'm just like now of course there you have you're awake so i just saw it rolling down i'm like Please God, please God, let it not go where I can't reach it. So wherever it, it, it reached, someone was able to reach it out and bring it to me. And then I continued recording the sunrise. It was so amazing. Now from there, after the sunrise, um, moved to Gilman's Point, which was just a few meters higher, sat there, caught a breath, and the guy asked me, are you sure 
we want to continue with the hike. I told him I can't come this far to just make it to the first peak. I have to. So I sat, I prayed, and then I had two digestive biscuits and a sip of juice. And guys, let me tell you, when the Lord answers prayers immediately, he answered, I got a boost of energy where I don't know from because I had not slept, been walking for so many hours. And then I told him, you know what, it's go time. So from there, all the way to, to Stella Point, the second one is Stella, the second highest peak on Mount Kilimanjaro is, uh, is Stella. It's a very it's a narrow walk, very slippery and dangerous because on at the bottom of it is just ice, 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 ice. And if you fall, you're gone. In fact, he said, here if you fall, nobody's coming for you, so be careful. Because he noticed I was walking really fast and running through it because I... I got energy. I was just really excited. I'm like, we have to make it to the top. And actually, I was wearing this exact outfit <laughs> when I was hiking. This is my... I always wear this shirt every time I do serious hikes to, on big mountains because it just reminds me that I, I can never be defeated. So, we um, made our way to, um, to Stella, um, Stel, to, to the second uh, peak, took photos, uh, took photos there as well, and then he asked me, are you sure? Can you make it to Uhuru, Uhuru Peak, because it's not a short walk. I told him, let's go. There's no way we've come this far to give up. Let's keep on going. And from there, since we didn't have, um, I forgot the name, these things you put under your, your, your hiking boots so that you can hold on to the ice so that you don't slide down, he put for me a sock. Oh no, that was coming back down, yeah. Leave that, that was coming back down. So from Stella, we went to to Uhuru Peak, slowly walked, and everybody, by, by the way, let me tell you, all those who had made it to the top had been there for almost an hour. So by the time I was coming through, these guys didn't believe I was going to make it. They saw me from afar, they're like, what? Nyambura, is that you? That day, I'm, I'm so excited. The air there is very thin, so you can't stay for long. So I'm so excited and I'm tired and I'm like, yes, we made it. My brother was so happy to see me. So are my other friends because they thought I'd never make it because guys, I was finished, kaput. I, they saw me and they knew I had no energy. But I made it there, I was able to sit for about 20 minutes, take photos with my guide who to date, I believe is my, was my angel sent from God. Because he was guiding me and somebody else who gave up. Um, so he was just with me the whole time. So I was able to make it through. All the way to Uhuru Peak, there's the picture. Ah, we sat there with my brother, took photos. Every time I get to a peak of a mountain, I say my prayer and it was just... I just learned that you're never defeated, guys. You can never be defeated as long as you have God on your side and if you keep your mind on it. And that was how I got to Uhuru Peak. was able to make our way back down, but it was the most painful hike down I've had because I had worn three pairs of socks because of the cold I experienced the night before. And just walking downhill and my foot kept hitting my shoe, it reached a point I took off my boot and just walked with my socks. And that ended up breaking my toenails, like half of my toenails came off, and, but, they, <laughs> but they grew back. But that experience for me was one that taught me to never give up, to keep on going no matter what, that even though everything around you tells you you can't make it to just keep on going believe in yourself pray to god always have like a cheering squad uh, my guide macho was my cheering squad my brother was my cheering squad my other um, hikers as well we call each other summiters the other summiters as well were my cheering squad always have guys who will cheer you on to make sure you finished and that's how i made it the top of the world's highest freestanding mountain mount kilimanjaro never going back never ever ever even if you pay me once i summit a mountain i'm done with that mountain but if you have had an experience especially those who've used a different uh, route please tell 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 us tell us in the comment section how it went um if you enjoyed it other mountains you've hiked which mountains you can recommend that I should hike and then come give a review of. And I know we'll be able to learn more from each other from our different hikes and the different challenges and experiences we've had. So thank you so much guys for the story of my hike up Mount Kilimanjaro. I hope you enjoyed it. If this is the kind of content you like, remember to give it a big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. 
see you next time on our next adventure story bye